normal <laughs> for the show. Uh, it's about 25 after 11 in the morning and happy to be joined. We have actual royalty here or royalty adjacent, we could call it, I suppose. Uh, Patrick Howell is with us from, I believe, right here in Lexington. And um, and and there he is. Uh, good morning, Patrick. Hey, Mick. How are you? Just fine. Happy to see you. Um, and happy to have you on the show. Now, when I say that you are uh, that you're royalty, I, I, that, what I mean, of course, is that you're regularly involved with uh, with uh, with costuming um, internationally famous drag queens. Can I can I say that? Is that would that be true? Um, yeah, I think that I think that's true. I I've been working with a lot of girls lately. Um, I've I've been costuming for over thirty years, so you know. Uh, I was this your call? Was this a, your original calling? Um, how did you get into costuming in the first place? It seems like such a fascinating place to be. You know, um, yeah, there's a story there. And the way it goes is I lost my sister when I was 23 and she was 21. She uh, she committed suicide. Wow. And, so sorry. Um, it's been forever now. So, but yeah. She had a sewing machine and I grabbed it when I was cleaning out her apartment and I started using it. Um, you know, I had friends. I was very young then. I was 23. So I was seeing the drag shows and I was excited about uh, their costumes and I would beg them to let me make stuff and I would make the worst things ever. And one thing led to another. And, you know, one day I was making costumes and I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make costumes, you know because I love it and I never look back and here I am. Amazing. And so, and just to be clear for people who are listening, your, your, your forte and maybe your single, I don't know, maybe you design other things too, but like you make, you make all kinds of sort of things that are, that are, that are employed by, by drag queens, uh, which is yeah, not I've... just, not the same as just any old costume at all. <laughs> Yeah, that's very true. Um, you know, my rule is if you can buy it off the rack, then you don't need me to make it because why bother? You know, people would have this idea that it was less expensive to have somebody make your wedding dress or, you know, make some suit or something. And I'm like, no, it's not like that. It's more expensive to have it custom made. Sure. Now, as now you mentioned going to a lot of drag shows when you were younger. You're talking about in the Cincinnati area, is that right? Uh, yeah, in Cincinnati, in Dayton. Um, we spent a lot of time in Dayton. And, you know, Cincinnati's, it was okay. We, there were bars there and stuff. But mostly, I would say in Dayton, we spent a oh, lot okay. of time in Dayton. Okay. But uh, all those bars are gone now. <laughs> huh. So... Now we have seen, um, and you know, I want to kind of work our way around to. You're working on a show that absolutely I had to pick my jaw up off the ground when I watched uh, HBO's "We're Here" um, the first time, and uh, and oh, gosh, I, I, I want to hold off on that for a second and just talk about the the sort of rise of the rise. You know, it, there was a time I feel like there was a time anyway when you know drag culture was was such an underground kind of thing um it was it was it was i don't want to say it was a well-kept secret or anything but it was definitely it was not it was not nearly as popular as it is now um would you agree not mainstream oh yeah it was definitely not a mainstream thing yeah it was definitely uh you know just a private club yes and this is and and so it's I don't know where to go with this exactly. It's I, I'm curious about how it's become more popular. It's wildly entertaining for anyone who's listening who's never seen a drag show. It's nothing but wildly entertaining. I, I mean, it's more than that, but <laughs> but it's at least that. How about that? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, it's it's evolved over the years. Uh, you know, twenty years ago or more the drag queens were scrambling to make their own costumes and they would pull together stuff and it was okay. And some of them had, uh, you know, a partner that would make their costumes for them. 
And these days, you know, along with the costuming and everything else, you know, everything has improved. You know, they have people now who specialize in makeup, people who specialize in costume, people who specialize in hair. And uh, it's, and, you know, all of that's partly due to Facebook and Instagram, all of these social media platforms have elevated drag in a different way than it originally was. If you wanted to see a drag show, you would have to go to the bar on Friday night or Saturday night, or you know, maybe there was an off night during the week, you could catch a show. And also after, after being around all these years, drag is not the same in the Midwest as it is uh, in New York, you come to find out that they have a, a whole different idea of what drag is. But now that we have social media, it's all like coming together and we can all see all the different kinds of drag that there really are. And there are new types of drag developing, uh, you know, these days. So it's, it's really just evolving over the years. Well, as someone who saw a Christmas drag show and took my and you know took my whole family as I want to do anyway, um, you know I, I I would say that it's I mean my daughter has has handed a dollar bill to many a drag queen, <laughs> and um, and it's it's it and it's an experience that I just don't think of. I don't mean to make it to, to trivialize it or make it seem like a lark. I mean it, to me, it's something that I do because. I want to sort of encourage the sort of, you know, broader mindset in, in, in my kid. Um, also, as I said before, super fun, <laughs> just super fun to, to, it, you mentioned the difference from different areas, you know, I always kind of want to claim drag, not me personally, but, but, you know, I always want Lexington to sort of have this special relationship with drag. I, I don't know that it does. Maybe every town has a special relationship with drag. Uh, what's been your experience, especially traveling around with, uh, with HBOs we're here. Um, you mentioned that drag is kind of different, different places. Does, does every community have some sort of relationship with drag? Well, you know, with the show we're here, we find out that there are places that have no outlet, no bars that have drag shows. In some places we've been, I think there have been literally no bars that have drag shows, no gay bars. Uh, we've struggled during We're Here to actually find venues that would allow us to put on a drag show. In, um, in Branson, in Branson, there was one place that allowed us to put on a show and they looked, they weren't very welcoming. And this is in Branson. You know, they have all kinds of shows everywhere in Branson and they were just not welcoming. And there were, I'm pretty sure there were no gay bars in Branson anywhere. We were in another, uh, maybe when was it? Twin Falls someplace. There was just like a pizza restaurant that would have a show one night a week or something, a pizza restaurant. So, and I don't know, it was just crazy. You find out that there are places where there are no drag shows. There are no bars to have drag shows. I'm like, really? What's going on? <laughs> how can you not, how can you have a town without a bar to have a show in? That's just crazy. So when we go and do these shows, the public shows up in droves. It's amazing. The energy, it's like they're, they're starving for it. Well, um, so uh, Patrick Howell is here. He's based in Lexington, um, is a drag clothing designer, drag costume designer. Um, and, uh, and he's, and, and, and you were involved with HBO's show. We're here. Um, I just want to share as quickly as possible that when I watched the first episode of we're here, which is in, um, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, I, I, I was, I was frozen. I was like frozen in place on the couch and I could, and I was sort of needing to sort of pick my jaw up off the ground over and over again. Let me say why. Um, and the why isn't because, you know, I know that there have been other television shows about drag. Um, some of them are wildly popular. Um, but one of the things that I felt like was is next level about we're here was 
its exploration of the sort of emotional component and the humanity of it, the humanity of, you know, you all go into a place like Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, um, finding some people who are, it, it, who are in need of self-expression, who maybe have, are haunted, haunted by decisions that they've made in their lives. And also um, the degree of, the degree of compassion that is, in many ways helmed by the drag performers themselves you know i remember this one sequence where i can't you'll you can tell me who it is but someone is talking to someone's mom who who essentially who cast their child out for 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 their for their for their you know preferences and right. it was the perfect place where before we're here, I would have expected, you know, the drag queen to be like, uh-uh, that's right. See, you can't think that. And in fact, in that in that particular instance, the drag queen was like, that must have been hard. They're like, Why, what were you so afraid of? And they said, I was afraid that my daughter was going to go to hell. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, you know, here it comes. And then, the, and, then, and then the performer says, that must have been really hard. And for me, that was somehow just absolutely, it, it was incredible, I thought. Yeah, you can probably was, say more um, than me. <laughs> that was Erica. And that relationship is still strained after all this time. Uh, but we won't go into all of that. But yeah, uh, Eureka was who was working with Erica. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of heart in the show. Uh, I believe, I think that you are just crazy if you watch that first 10 minutes and you didn't cry. You know, I I watched it back because it was the first episode and we got to see it, a rough cut of it. And I'm like, man, this show has got something uh, because you feel it right from the beginning. It's, and, uh, I did. And I'd never done any work like this before. So that first episode was really a challenge for me because I'm not, I was never in the world of, you know, doing a television show. So here I am flying to Gettysburg and uh, my costumes weren't ready and I had to be on camera. I'm not good on camera. Uh, it was just a lot. And the bar that we performed the show in was like 110 degrees. Everybody was melting. The hairdresser, he cut his finger on something and had to go to the emergency room. So, you know, there's a lot of moving parts in this show and they really are trying to get to the heart of things, whether, you know, it's just anybody and everybody in the community, including people who are advocates. And we just want to tell their stories and lift them up and show everyone that they are not alone in their struggles that you know we're we just want to show them that the that there's a whole community here and they have support and we want the world to see them because they're important they have lives they're people so i think that's really what the show is all about this is patrick hell um he's he's on he's here in lexington based here in lexington as a drag clothing designer and also working on hbo's we're here um um, which, as I said before, is kind of a is a I thought it was a breathtaking show. I'm not really even sure why I pressed play. Not that I wouldn't watch that kind of thing, but I, but I pressed play and I did not get what I was expecting. I, I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know if I was expecting Priscilla Queen of the Desert um, or or what. But it's um, it is a show that exists on many levels. And and I just and and over and over when I was watching, it, I just kept thinking, Oh my God, this is. Um, you know, this is, a, it, it was just so many different things, I felt like. Um, all all sort of dancing in the symphony at the same time. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. They give you eye candy. They give you an opening look. And it's, you know, it's uplifting. It, it'll it make you cry. They mm -hmm. tell important stories. And they have a celebration with the drag show at the end. So it really is a, a very involved show, just like all aspects of, of, I don't know, just so many things to show you. I mean, if you just told interviews, if you just did interviews with these people, I don't think it would be as good a show, you know. Gotta Patrick, have um, what, how has, um, so you, you've been, you've been doing, you've been doing drag clothing design for, for many years before this. Um, 
has has being involved with this with this HBO show, which is you know available everywhere. I won't say I'm not necessarily talking about sort of opportunities for you, but has it has it changed has it changed fundamentally any perspective that you had? Has it opened has it opened your eyes to any to any to things that that you maybe hadn't considered before, or or maybe just reaffirmed some things that that you already thought? Um, are there ways that the show has changed you? Um, I I have been altered by the show uh in a in a couple of ways you know first of all i feel like i really had to elevate what i was doing and in order to feel comfortable putting it on television so i'm always trying to uh, improve my work and again i'm seeing you know aspects of of communities that i've never seen before i've gone places i've never gone before i had never gone outside of Cincinnati or Lexington or Dayton. I've never flown on a plane until I was 50 years old. So here I am all across the country seeing how other people live. And yeah, I'm seeing, I'm just, I'm just seeing individuals that have stories and, you know, of course I'm changed by this. Um, It's, you know, it's opening your mind to, to people's way of thinking about their gender and their sexuality and just beginning to understand because you know i'm a gay man and i'm like okay i'm i'm 55 years old i'm gay and of course all of the the pronouns and all of these things are new to me and you know and it's difficult to change you want to be sensitive to everyone's feelings and try to understand where they're at with all of that. So of, yeah, all of this, the show is changing all of that for me. It's broadening my mind and so that I fully accept and understand what these people go through. Um, one thing that I'm curious about <clears throat> that I kind of, again, I thought was sort of implied in the show in some ways was, you know, what is, what's kind of uh, grappling with what sort of drag performance, drag culture, all those things has to, um, has to offer to, you know, straight people like me. I don't know. You know, it, I feel like there's a lot of people maybe who would be in a position to be like, well, that's not for me. I'm not gay. And uh, I'm just fine wearing men's clothing and I'm a man. So, um, so, but I felt like the show, kind of reached really deep for that and, and, and sort of suggested that there's a deeper humanity here, I suppose. Um, what do you think are some of the things that sort of, you know, a cognizance or sort of being present for drag culture can do for anybody if, if, if you do have thoughts on that? Well, I think that you can begin to see in yourself uh, that you don't have to be caught up with uh, what male and female roles are supposed to be. You can live your life in a way that you feel comfortable with. It doesn't matter what you wear. It doesn't matter what your jewelry is or how your hair is or how you behave. This is a freedom. This is uh, drag is an art form that allows people to express themselves. And I think for all this time, we're all walking around thinking that men have to be a certain way and women have to be a certain way. And drag just blows that out of the water and lets you see what the, how free you can be. And you, know, you can put on makeup and put on a wig and put on a dress or whatever you wanna put on, whatever you wanna do uh, to express yourself and be comfortable with that. We're all trying to learn to accept people for who they are. One of the, um, Patrick Howell is here, by the way, the drag fashion designer, um, currently working on HBO's We're Here, among other things. And I'm so glad to have you, Patrick. We only have a few more minutes left, but I I hope that you'll come back and talk to us some more. Um, um, One of the things I was reminded of, and I think the show communicates this really well is I can't remember. I went to some sort of uh, kind of, it was either Kentucky youth assembly or I don't know what it was, but there was some kind of thing that I went to where it was all people my age and I was much younger and anyone, we were all given permission to stand up and, uh, and request a round of applause for ourselves. <laughs> and you didn't have to have a reason. 
you could just stand up at any point in the group proceedings and be like, could I have a round of applause, please? And everyone would just explode with applause for you. And, um, and, and, I, and I saw a, a facet of this in, in what I've watched on, on We're Here, and you were kind of touching on it too. There's something about this, the, the, the feeling, the sort of waves of adulation flow over a person who finds the courage in themselves to, to perform in a drag situation, regardless of their, regardless of their sexual orientation. Um, and it just seemed like, wow, wouldn't it be great if everybody could have this, you know, if everybody could have this experience of this just absolute adulation just pouring over you. Um, did I get any of that right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's I think that's a great way to look at it. I really do. I think that's a great way to look at it. And uh, these people need that. All of these people that we've talked to have been oppressed in some way or another. And they just need to know that they're loved and accepted and to put them on stage in a little drag show in their town and have everyone cheer for them is just a moment that they can remember for their life. And hopefully it will stay with them. And, um, you know, it's just a great thing. It really is. I would also like to uh, talk about we're here in another way. There's just a great crew of people involved in putting this all together. The creators, uh, Johnny Ingram and uh, Stephen Warner are great guys and they put this show together and they're actually working on another show. Uh, and I work closely with some other designers. I work with Eureka primarily, who is my my drag queen that I, sh that I put you know in drag. And also there's Domino Couture who works with Bob and Diego, who works with Shangela. And we have a hairdresser whose name is Gloria or Wigs by Grace. And these are all just great people. We call them their glam teams. So we are their support system. And each one of them also has their own makeup artists that work with them. And then a huge crew of people behind all of us that help everybody get where they're going and be on time. And there's just so much behind the scenes. And Peter LaGreco is our director, uh, just a very talented man. So I just wanted to make sure that I, that I talk about that because there's just a lot of people that make this happen. Mm -hmm. And in, in that, I would include the editors too, because the show is so incredibly edited. And a lot of people maybe don't realize how much stor of storytelling happens by way of editors. Um, yeah, that really yeah. struck me the... Uh, the first time that I watched it because you know I think about editing all the time it's like how do they put all this together so yeah, yeah and it's really fast paced the clips happen really close together you know the music the um, actually uh, Marla who does like uh, you know you saw the trailers that, that drive by she is the head of the art department she works with Lady Gaga and so I don't, she's amazing. <laughs> and she puts together other things on the show as well. They're, they're little safe spaces that they work in. She put all that together. So everything that you see on the drag stage and, and those things are all done by Marla uh, Weinhoff, I think her name is. I never get that right. But anyway, just a lot of talented, wonderful people that, uh, that we work with on this show. Um, Patrick, thank you so much for visiting with us. Let, let me ask just as, as a sort of uh, outro, and again, I hope you'll come back and visit um, sometime. We'd love to have you back. Um, yeah. what, what's, uh, what, what's, what's in store for you in 2022, or at least the sort of beginning? Are there things on the horizon that, that you would like to mention? Um, um, things that you're excited about? Um, uh, you know, what you're working right. on, of course, inclusive. <laughs> I'm working on things back to back right now. Um, I've got pageant people i've got a pageant package for one of the drag queens going on right now eureka is going to be in vegas performing for three months so i'll be uh, doing some things for her as well um nina west do we know who nina west is uh, nina west is in yes. hairspray right now so I, I don't get to do anything for hairspray but i'm so excited for nina 
and uh, I can't wait for her to get back so that we can get back to work again. She performs in Columbus, or she's from Columbus, Ohio. So she's one of my big clients, and uh, I hope to get back to working for her and doing some things for her. But yeah, I've got, it's just one thing after another, drag queen after drag queen. <laughs> Well, this is so great to hear about, and and uh, I w would I'd love to hear more. We'd love to hear more about it um, on another edition of the show if you'll come back and visit us, Patrick. Yeah, absolutely. You name the time Fantastic. and place, I'll be here. Best wishes um, to you in 2022, and uh, this uh, um, Patrick Howell here of HBO's We're Here, and so much more, drag clothing designer. Thank you, Patrick, for visiting with us. Thank you. Have a great day. This is Trivial Thursdays, and we're running a little behind schedule, so I'm just going to switch right into welcoming our musical guest, um, Missy Mae Ryder, who I believe is here. Shaboom, look at that. She's even got a band and everything. Of course she does. <laughs> and they're sounding great. I uh, really appreciate that, too. Wow. Hi, you